Hi, welcome back. I'm Kimmy with On William Street, and this week we're going to talk about quilting and how to choose what designs to combine when creating a custom quilting plan. So when I'm creating a quilting plan, sometimes it can be um, confusing or hard to choose which um, elements to use together and to decide um, whether, how to combine them to get the best look for the finished quilt. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of share with you some of the different techniques and te tips and techniques that I use when I'm deciding exactly what elements I want to put together and how to combine them and how to make them look to improve the overall, to enhance the overall look of the final quilt. All right, so the biggest thing that I really think about when I'm doing designs is, like I said, I'm going to take those, probably start with about eight to 10 different elements. I'm gonna get very, very comfortable with those elements. I'm gonna use them a lot, I'm gonna sketch a lot, I'm gonna doodle them a lot, and I'm going to understand exactly how they're going to work with each other. So some of the kind of um, foundational elements that I use a lot that I play with is I definitely have pebbles, and pebbles are one of those things that I really have a love-hate relationship with. I don't love quilting them, and I don't know a lot of quilters that do, but I absolutely love the way that they look. They look just so fantastic that I give in and I do it anyway. So another one is going to be swirls. Got a couple different swirls that I like. Pick your favorite. It doesn't really matter. Um, but play with swirls is another foundational element that I use a lot. Uh, I also really like um, an elongated swirl. So if you've got a bigger area to fill, you've got your elongated swirl that you can play with as well. So different type of a swirl. Another one is the wishbone. So back and forth, wishbone is great and a lot of fun to use. Back and forth lines. This can go any direction, can fill any shape. They're really fantastic. Um, obviously you have your basic feather and this doesn't necessarily have to be a basic feather. You can do a basic bump back feather. You can do more playful feathers. You can do funky feathers. You can fill them in. So whatever, however you like to draw your feather. Or if you hate feathers, don't include that in your kind of foundation. Um, so, in, so those are kind of some of my curved foundational ones. I also really use a lot of straight lines. I really like the piano key look a couple of lines. You can also do groups of three or four lines together. So that one's a lot of fun. Cross hatching in any direction can really give a lot of texture and dimension. And then um, just straight lines or echoes, it's evenly spaced lines. You've got echoes. So if I have a triangle, you can echo the triangle shape a few times. Um, and then also like if you've got a square, Echoing the square out. These are fun because then that kind of gives you another shape inside that you can fill. So whatever those elements are that you really love, that you're really drawn to, get them out, drop, put them on a sketchbook, write them down, and then go ahead and start looking at how you can combine them to, to do different things for the quilt, whether it's to make one shape stand out, whether it's to add some fun quilting in the background or the negative space, whether it's to give some overall texture. But the first thing really to focus on and doing is to get them down and then start putting them together and seeing how they play. Like in this shape here, I might not include a feather, but you can easily fill that with some swirls. You can fill that with um, some pebbles. You can put just some back and forth lines in there. A lot of different fills that you can put in there. I know there's also like the swirls with the feathers on them. Um, if I want to create an overall background element, I can combine easily combine the swirls with the pebbles with some feathers on there. I even can throw some back and forth lines in there and you can see how these four things, if you just keep alternating how you're quilting them would look really good together. You can also come down here and just see as I drew these two next to each other how much different those are. They're going to give you a lot of different um, contrast and they're going to really make each other stand out. Of course you've got the cross hatching which can fill any area. It can also contrast. You can make it any size you want so it can really be a good contrast against some of the different elements. So just by putting them all down on one piece of paper you can start to see how they're going to play together and what are the different things you can do with them. All right, so when I'm trying to decide how to combine designs and thinking about the different elements, I kind of have them split up into different categories. So I'm going to have your curved elements, things like pebbles, things like swirls. Um, I consider feathers to be a curved element. Anything that's really got a nice flowy shape to it, those are things I'm going to classify as a curved element. I'm also going to have more of my straight line elements. 
anything I'm doing with a ruler, straight lines, you can have um, concentric boxes or concentric swirls. You can do um, anything that kind of is the ruler work inside of a shape. If you have triangles, you know, you can fill those shapes in that way. Anything that has straight lines. Uh, you can also even have some of the fills that you can make um, the straight lines as well. So those are really the two different groups and two different categories that I'm going to place my designs into and kind of knowing ahead of time which designs I really like that are the straight lines or, um, and the angular shapes and which designs I really like um, and enjoy using that are the circular uh, motifs is going to give me help, is going to be a help when I go ahead and decide how I'm gonna put them on the quilt. And there's gonna be a few different ways that I'm going to um, combine these. So the first one when you think about combining designs is to do an all over combine on the quilt. So you can see here on our Aloha quilt, everything in the background reads as one single motif. It doesn't really have different things, but when you get in close, you can see that it is multiple designs. I've gone in. So on the Aloha quilt, I have the pebbles, but they're also interspersed with the swirls. And then I've also thrown in some paisleys in there. And any time that you have kind of this motif that you really want to kind of all read as one, um, you can combine the different elements and the different all over fills. And the key there to making them look as if they are one motif is really going to be the density of which you, you quilt them and the different scales that you're using. If I make all of these to have about the same amount of space in between them, when you see the final quilt, it's gonna all look like it's one overall element. You're not gonna see necessarily the three different designs as you can see in the Aloha quilt, and it's going to come together and appear to be one combined design. So that is one way to combine designs and have them come together to be one bigger motif. However, if I take these same designs and I change the scale, and the, the scale of the different um, elements, and I do little pebbles still, but then I throw in a great big swirl. When I come in with these little tiny pebbles to fill in around it, that swirl is really going to stand out and it's gonna become a major element. This also works if you're doing things like a feather. If you put your feather in here, you can throw one in really quick. And then I cut it around this feather with either a little tiny pebble or you throw in some really tight back and forth lines. Um, that's going to really make that feather become an element that's really gonna stand out because the density of the, of the things is different. You have these big empty spaces here in the feather and not a lot of empty spaces in the areas around it, which are going to make the feather become a focal point. And that's one thing to remember when you're combining designs and deciding how to quilt something is the empty areas are actually what's going to end up standing out the most. So that's one thing to consider when you're combining designs is how does the density interact with the different things and how is that going to affect the, the look? Do I want one element to be more obvious than the other elements. If you do change the, the scale and the density of how you're going to quilt that so that it is bigger or has more space in between it, and that's going to help that element stand out. If you want them to all act as one thing, you're gonna go ahead and make them all the same density, make them the same scale, and they're going to become one element. So one other thing I really wanna point out with this Aloha quilt is for the most part, everything I've got is the same density. But if you look really closely, you can actually see that I've hidden in there some of the different shapes and different animals. I have um, some flowers, there are dolphins, there's manta rays, so a couple different elements I've gotten in there. And while they are um, somewhat hidden because of the, the different prints and the different busy background, by leaving them open and leaving the density there a lot um, less, then the fill around it, they do stand out a little bit and you can see those things. If they were a similar density or if I filled them in with echo lines, they're gonna basically blend right in and they're really not gonna be very obvious. So that was a fun little trick. So I kept them small enough that they weren't completely obvious, but they were a fun little thing when you realize they're there to go looking for and that was by a simple density change. Another way to look at this is actually you can change the scale of a design with the same element and it can almost become two different designs. So as you can see here on these turtles, 
I've got the pebbles in the background, but because I have the little pebbles and then I have the big pebbles, it almost looks like there's two different motifs creating the stripes across the wave behind this little turtle mini. So that is another way, thing to think about is you don't always necessarily need two designs to make a look, uh, make it look like there are multiple things going happening in the, in the background of a quilt. So this is another example of that scale change. So one thing while I am talking a lot about density changes and, and watching the density, I do want to keep an, I do want you to keep in mind, while some people may tell you that you need to have the same density across the whole quilt, and obviously I'm telling you that that's not necessary, I do want you to keep in mind balance. Uh, and also keep in mind that when you have a lot of very dense quilting, it's going to suck in a lot of fabric. So if you do a really dense quilting right here in this area, but then you keep the rest of the quilt fairly loose or um, a lot of a lower density um, quilting, this area is going to actually get sucked in and you're probably gonna have some warpage down in this corner. So one thing you wanna keep in mind as you're planning the quilting around and deciding which designs to put together is if I've got a dense area here, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure to balance it across the quilt. It doesn't need to be the whole quilt, but we're gonna put it in multiple locations so that's gonna help kind of bring everything in together so you don't have just one area that's super dense. It's also gonna make it feel more natural and less uneasy by doing it this way and having it balance around the quilt. Okay, another thing to really keep in mind that I use a lot in quilting is contrast. And contrast can be different things. It can be hard against the soft, so it can be your feathers against some straight lines. It can also be um, density. Obviously, that's gonna give you, if you change the density, have a super dense area, it's gonna contrast with the wider area. It can also be um, directional contrast. And I use this a lot. I really like to use you know, these small back and forth lines as fill areas. But if I'm going to use it against an element, I'm gonna make sure that that element's gonna go vertical. So whether it's a vertical feather like I drew on the other page, can't draw them from the top down very well, so we're gonna go this way. So that's gonna give me the contrast that stands out there. Um, or else if it's going to simply be another element that looks like it's a different direction. So I also really like wishbones. So if I'm gonna put wishbones and the back and forth lines next to each other, whether they're directly next to each other or in separate areas, I'm going to try to always make sure to alternate the direction. And what that's gonna do for me is that's gonna make those two elements become a lot more obvious. If I switch from this to wishbones, and I'm keeping them the same direction, it's almost like why even bother um, switching? Because there's really not gonna be, by the time you see that in the quilting, it's really not gonna be all that much different. So that's another thing that I really think about when I'm doing it, is their directional design, one that's definitely um, can be a vertical or horizontal, and I'm combining it with other designs, what are some obvious vertical or horizontal designs that I can t contrast it up next to. So what I'm talking about, um, when I say things like whether you're obviously separating out the area or not, I'm meaning really when you have a, an area that you're putting some lines in, basically outlining an area. You'll see in a lot of the quilts that I do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually create shapes and I'm gonna put two, two straight lines to separate that, out that shape. So I might have something like that. You might have something in here stick something off of here, whatever that design is in the background. I'm, a lot of times we'll actually use these lines to differentiate these areas. And then I can go ahead and look at what I'm gonna fill inside. And this is one of those areas where I'm really going to try to contrast what I'm putting in there. If I'm gonna separate out these areas, I wanna make sure that each one has a purpose. So that would be one where I would maybe do some wishbones here. Then I wanna make sure that whatever goes in the next one is going the opposite direction. I can either just do a direction change or I can do something a little bit more angular and do, you know, just some straight lines. And give this a straight line fill. Then when I come down into here, well, let's put some swirls in, which is another obvious directional change from that one. So you can see how that kind of affects the overall look and really makes each of those areas become very distinct and very different because of the way that they've contrasted across the quilt.
The most important thing to remember when you're um, learning to combine designs and put them together is really to just practice. Get really comfortable with a few designs that you um, can use a lot and you'll get really and you'll get used to how those ones interact with each other and you'll know how they're going to look when you decide if you're going to use them in your quilting plan and how they're going to interact with each other. And also do lots of doodling. Uh, you don't necessarily have to quilt all these things out to see how they're going to look. I always create a quilting plan ahead of time so that I have an idea of how they're going to play together in the balance between the different elements. So definitely make sure that you do lots of doodling, make out your plan ahead of time, and just have fun. And hopefully you will feel more comfortable when, you pick, um, when you're picking those designs and combining different elements to enhance your quilt top. So don't forget to um, subscribe to our channel. If you like what I saw, if, if you liked what you saw, hit the like button. Uh, we're also on Instagram and Facebook where we post things um, all the time, all the different projects that we're working on and different tips and tricks. And we will see you next week. Bye.